Father, Lord, we come with hearts of thanksgiving. We acknowledge that you are the great I am. You're the Prince of Peace and you're Lord of Lords. We thank you for your protection as we left, as we left our homes and return. We thank you, a Heavenly Father, Lord, because we're in our right state of mind. We thank you, a Heavenly Father, Lord, that you have surrounded us with friends and loved ones. We thank you for the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, that never loses its power, but gives us strength from day to day. And Father, as we come into your house, O Heavenly Father, Lord, we need a revival. Father, Lord, we have become complacent. Father, Lord, we have become tired and weary. We are focused on the things of this world, O Heavenly Father, Lord, and we have taken our eyes off of you. Sometimes the things of this world make us so frustrated and confused, Father, Lord, we forget your promises. We forget that you, O Heavenly Father, promised that you would never leave us or you'll never forsake us. That you promised that anything that we ask you, your name, believe in, you're going to grant unto us. Father, each and every one of us need a revival. But we need a revival also as a church, O Heavenly Father. We don't want to be where we are, O Heavenly Father. Lord, we want to go higher and deeper in you, O God. And so tonight, as we come together, Lord, and we come in one accord, we are casting every cure on you. And if there's anything, O Heavenly Father, that would hinder our worship tonight, Father, Lord, we ask that you remove it in the name of Jesus. May we keep our eyes upon you, O Heavenly Father. Keep our eyes upon the cross, O God. May we look to you from whence come of our help, knowing that our help comes from you. Father, I bring your maid servant before you, O God, and as she bring your word tonight, I pray for a new anointing, O Heavenly Father. Not the anointing that she had yesterday or a few weeks ago, O God, but a new anointing for tonight. A new anointing, O Heavenly Father, not only for us as a church, but for her as a person. As a carrier of your gospel, O Heavenly Father, Lord, fill her with your Holy Spirit. Father, help us not to become too ashamed or complacent, O Heavenly Father. Not to be too proper, O God, to clap our hands, O God, and to call out upon you. But let this be a night, O Heavenly Father, where we worship you and worship you in spirit and in truth. So, Father, I thank you for this opportunity, O Heavenly Father. I thank you for this day that we can come into your house, O God. But let us remember, O Heavenly Father, this is only a building, but we are the church. So bless us, O Heavenly Father. Bless us individually and collectively. In Jesus' name, amen. Good evening, everyone. You do a little better than that. Good evening, everyone. How are you guys feeling in this house? Oh, come on, Miller. How are you guys feeling in this house? Take a little bit more volume in these monitors. How are you guys feeling in this house? You guys feeling good? It's revival night. We came in here for the presence of the Lord. Amen. So... I don't know, all week the Lord has been just talking to me about the authority and the power and the power that we have as believers. Right? And he's just been reminding me of that we're seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And so we're gonna sing a song. Hopefully you know it, and if you don't catch on really, really quick to it, but it talks about God going before us and setting our crooked path straight. Amen? Anybody agree with that? And so, Father, we ask you that you come into this room tonight. We invite you, Lord Jesus, we invite your presence here. As we sing and as we lift you up, Father, we ask for an outpour of your spirit of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, All right, now you can't leave me up here by myself singing. All right? Yes, yeah, sing along with me. Is that cool? That's the only agreement I have. You got to sing along with me, all right? So the song is real simple. It goes like this. This year, God, you go ahead of me. This year, you are aligning everything. This year, things are falling in place for me. This year, all the land will you for me. Think you got it? This year, Lord, you go ahead of me. This year, you are aligning everything. But this year, things are falling in place for me. This year, what the land will you for me? Watch this. So I walk in all God has 
for me I recover everything I walk in total victory Because Christ paid, he paid for me I walk in all God has for me I recover everything I walk in total victory Because Christ paid, he paid for Courses, I know God fail I know God fail Because Christ paid, he paid for me I know God fail I know God fail Because Christ paid, he paid One more time, I know God fail Because Christ paid, He paid it all for me. I know I fail, I know I fail. Because Christ paid, He paid for. Did you got it? I walk in all God has for me. I recover, recover everything. Sing, I walk, I walk, I walk in all God has, and I recover, I recover everything I walk, because Christ paid, all right, back to the verse, ready, so this year, Lord, you go ahead of me. You are aligning everything, say this year, things are falling in place. 
look back over my life and I've seen how good you are, Lord, from you. Every good thing, Lord, even in the indifferent times, my God, you deserve. Can we lift our hands in this room and say, you're worthy, Jesus, you're worthy. up a shout of praise in this house. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, church. Oh, come on, let's not
going to bother you one more time. I'm going to bother Abby one more time. She knows we love her. But I'm going to ask her to sing that one more time. And when we sing it, make it personal. God deserves the glory. You know, so many times the enemy, he just tries to keep us down. Whether it's your health, your family, your finances, whatever it may be, the enemy tries to keep you down and he tries to keep you down for a reason. But I think about Job. When his friends decided they were going to remind him that it's because of what he did that all these things were happening. But what I love is when he said, should I only give God glory when I'm on the mountaintop? Or should I also give him glory when he does and puts me in the valley? But I'm going to tell you this. I learned from Job that when I'm up, I praise God. When I'm down, I praise God. When I'm in between, I praise God. So Abby, lead us through that again. Your word.
presence of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I do. I know that he's here, and he has something special for each and every one of us. Amen? You may be seated. I want to take this opportunity to welcome you on behalf of our pastor and Sister Sparkle. I want to welcome you to Ruach. Pastor, I'm saying it right? Because he said it so nicely. Ruach, our revival services. And I have to tell you, I am so excited about what God has to tell us today. Because last week was a blessing, even while I was online. And I saw this, I said, my God, we are in for a ride. And I cannot wait to see what God is going to do. He's already begun. And I can't wait to see what happens at the end. I want to welcome you again to Ruach. And we want to take this moment. We want to do some church shout outs. And I already know one church that's here. Let me see. Um, great. Greater grace. Greater grace. You know what? If you are in the house and you're from greater grace, take a stand. Take a stand because I saw you guys coming in. All right. Let's give them a round of applause. Are there any other churches with us today? Any other churches? Well, I know one church that's in the house. Miller Evangelical, are you in the house? I can't see you, so I'm sorry. You're going to have to take a stand, too. Miller, are you in the house? All right, amen. Amen. Again, welcome to our services. God has something special in store for each and every one of us. Each of us. God has a message and God has a reason why we are here. So open up your heart, open up your minds, put down those burdens, leave it in his hands, and allow him to work through you. Allow him to speak to you. Take all the noise out of your head. Lock it up. Everything that happened during the week, at work, at home, at school, Put it aside and give God room to move. Did I say it? Did you hear what I said? Give God room to what? Move. If you're coming in expectation, give God the freedom to do what he's got to do. He's going to do something special. And you are going to have a testimony. And we can't wait to hear it. We're going to go right into our offering. So I'm going to go ahead and ask that we prepare for offering. If we can go ahead and bow our heads and close our eyes, and we'll pray over that offering. Again, there are many ways to give. You can text. You can mail it in. You can give it directly here. If you need any assistance with that, you can see any of our ushers. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Dear Lord, thank you for this opportunity to be here. Father, as we prepare to give to you what's already yours as a symbol of thanks, as just saying thank you for what you've done, we pray, Lord, that you will take that offering and that you will multiply it and help it to further your kingdom. Father, for those who are unable to give, I pray, Lord, that you will open doors for them and open ways that they will be able to also give to you. We thank you for all you have done and what you will continue to do. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. This year, God, you go ahead of me. This year, you are aligning everything. Things are falling in place for me. This year, woman and you me. This year, don't you go ahead of me? This year, you are like everything. This year, things are falling in place for me. This year, what the land will you for me? So I, I walk in all God has for me. I recover everything. I walk in total victory because Christ paid, he paid for me.
much price paid, you paid for. No go fail, no go fail, no go fail. Because Christ paid, he paid for me. I no go fail, I no go fail. Because Christ paid, he paid it all for me. Come on, somebody praise the Lord tonight. Come on, if you really believe that, if you really believe that, why don't you look at somebody close to you, tell somebody close to you this year. Come on, say it like you believe it. This year, we walk in all God has for us. Tell them this year, we walk in victory because Christ paid for me. One more time, tell them this year, we walk in all God has for us. Tell them this year, we walk in total victory because Christ already paid for me. Now, if you believe that, would you shout hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I walk, I walk in all God has for me. Cover everything. I walk in total victory. Come on, he paid for me. I walk in all God has for me. I recover everything. I walk in total. Come on, somebody begin to walk in victory. Like you believe it, I walk, I walk in all my God for me because Christ made everything. Come on, say, I walk in total victory because Christ paid. Somebody say, I walk, I walk in walk around like you claim it in Jesus' name. Somebody begin to walk and dance before the Lord. I walk in all God has for me. I recover everything, everything. I walk in total victory because Christ paid. Come on, let's stand up now. walk like you believe it. We are walking into inheritance. We are walking into victory. Walk right into revival because I walk into the victory because one more time. 
Yeah. One more time. Real big, real loud. Shout hallelujah in this place. Come on, somebody praise the Lord. I dare you tonight to praise in advance for a victory tonight. I don't know what you came in here for or what you came in here with a burden, but I know that my God is able to heal and deliver. My God is able to give you a total victory. My God is able to give you breakthrough tonight. So just walk around. Oh my God, walk around in victory tonight whatever it is cancer we walk around in just walk around symbolic symbolic by the authority of the name of Jesus Christ we walk around we are walking into a new season, Miller Evangelical. We are walking into revival. We are walking into healing. We are walking into breakthrough. We are walking by the hand of God, for by his help and by his strength, we are walking in at the appointed time. Here it comes now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody walk, 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 walk. I walk in total victory. Come on, it's Friday night at Rip. I walk in total victory because Christ paid, He paid. One more time, I walk, I walk in all God has for. Oh, I recover every, everybody say, I walk in total victory. Break it down, break it down, I walk. Sing it like you believe it. Sometimes you have to sing faith into your heart. Come on, sing it one more time. I walk. Yes, yeah, sing I walk in total victory. Because Christ paid, he paid for me. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord in this house. Praise the Lord to all of you online. Come on, oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. For the Lord is good and his mercies endure forever. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul and all that is within me. Let it bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. And forget not all his benefits. Can somebody think of the benefits of God? The blessings of God. God. Can somebody believe God tonight for the benefits that are coming to them? Sometimes you have to encourage yourself in the Lord and begin to sing things that are not even at the moment in the present. That's faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So you sing it. You may be going through a trial now, but I walk in total victory because of the, the finished work of Jesus on the cross. And what that symbolized for us. Glory be to God. You, you may be seated in this house. I love the presence of the Lord. 
And I love how the Lord can just minister to you at any given moment. And tonight, tonight we continue in our Ruach Nights of Revival. Last week, last Friday night, I told you that my assignment that night was simply to set the tone. I, my assignment based on what the Lord gave to me was simply to set the pace. And tonight I passed the baton. I passed the baton to somebody who I know is going to run a strong leg tonight. As a matter of fact, the word on the street is she was a world-class track runner. I don't know. So she probably will run world-class speed tonight. But no, I, I am so happy to have Dr. Deborah Charles with us tonight. And she's going to be bringing the word of the Lord. She's going to break the bread of life tonight. I want to encourage you to open up your heart and your mind to receive from God tonight. Dr. Charles is simply a vessel. But the Lord is going to speak to us tonight. And let us open our hearts and minds carefully to hear what he has to say. Before she comes, I'm going to ask Abigail to sing just one more song to set the atmosphere as we prepare for the word of the Lord. And as we do so, let us ready our hearts to hear what the Lord has to say. Let the Spirit minister to us as a church. remember how the song started <laughs> I love you Lord oh your mercy never fails me in all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake Till I lay my head, yeah, I will sing the goodness of God. So all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am in I'm able, I will sing the goodness of God And I love your voice In darkest nights, you were close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as my friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. You, you ought to stand to your feet and say, all of my life you have.
Your goodness is running after, running after me. Your goodness is running after, it keeps running after. Sing that one more time, your goodness, your goodness. Praise the Lord. Father, tonight, breathe on us. We love you, Lord. We thank you for this privilege to be in your house, to worship you, to be encouraged to do better. Father, as I stand behind your sacred desk, I pray that you will give me clarity of thought and clarity of speech so your people will hear your word and be edified. We bless you tonight and we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. God is a good God. All my life he has been faithful. And I know that's your testimony also. Greetings to those in house and those viewing online and welcome to the second installment of Rock Nights. Um, Pastor Justin began this 400 meter relay last weekend. Mm -hmm. Reverend Harrison. And he gave me the second leg. So I have to keep ahead of the pact while I turn the corner in the name of Jesus. 
Amen. But I would like to greet Pastor Justin and Sister Sparkle tonight. And please continue to allow God to use you all and all other ministers in their respective places and spaces. Tonight, we continue under the theme, Breathe on Us. And we want the Spirit of God to restore us and bring us back into relationship with him. That wonderful relationship that was initiated by Christ. My text tonight, I'm sticking to the text that was given, Ezekiel chapter 37, and I'm reading verses 5 and 10. And it reads, Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. And verse 10, So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. I pray that when we are finished with these four weeks, we will be an exceedingly great army. Allow me to share on the topic revival in the city of dry bones. I like reading about the history of the Christian church a lot. And when I'm feeling overwhelmed, I usually read about the apostles or missionaries, evangelists, early church revivals, or the experiences of Paul, Peter, Stephen, Billy Graham, Swift Smith Wigglesworth, D.L. Moody, or Charles Finney. And then I get set back in my place because I haven't done or experienced half of what they did but they kept going. And recently I came across an article on the Great Welsh Revival. Historian Thomas Rayner states that this revival started in a small room, in a small church, at a youth meeting. And the young people were crying out to God to make a difference in their lives so that they could make a difference in the world. A short description of the Welsh Revival of 1904, the bars were not the only places to be emptied. Dance halls and theaters and football matches all saw a dramatic decline in attendance. The courts and jails were deserted and the police found themselves without work to do. The story is told of policemen who closed their station and formed a choir to sing at the revival meetings. Long-standing debts were repaid. Church and family feuds were healed. And a new unity of purpose was felt across denominational divides. Friends, we need a revival that would shake our city a revival where Christians serve God in spirit and in truth, and lost souls get saved in great numbers. The word revival come, comes from two Latin words, vivo meaning to live and re meaning again. It is like a rebirth or a reawakening, an invigorating experience where the Holy Spirit moves freely among the believers, setting their hearts on fire. Are you ready to get on fire tonight? The Bible dictionary defines revivals as concentrated periods of intense and often widespread ministry of the Holy Spirit. They come in two forms. Movements of spiritual renewal among God's people or an outpouring of conviction among unbelievers, leading to repentance and the conversions of many. I want us to experience both. And my prayer is that during these four weeks of meetings, we will experience spiritual renewal, which will encourage us to witness to the lost. And the lost will experience an outpouring of conviction that would lead to much conversions. Are you with me tonight? Amen. 
We want to take our city by force. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Maya Pullman writes in the book, Knowing the Doctrines of the Bible. We live in a universe whose immensity presupposes a mighty maker and whose beauty, design, and order point to a wise lawgiver. But who made the maker? We can keep going back from cause to effect, but we can't keep going back forever without admitting a forever being. That forever being is God Almighty, the eternal one, that cause and source of every good thing which exists. There was never a time when God began to be. He always was. He, was. he has no origin, no ending. He is from everlasting to everlasting. The Israelites knew who their God was. He had delivered them time and time again. He fed and covered them in the wilderness, past the Red Sea, threw down the walls of Jericho, crushed their enemies time and time again. They knew that their God was all powerful. And here in chapter 37, Ezekiel is about to have an experience with this all powerful God, with this all knowing God. And his answer seems to allude to the fact that he knew who this God is. The discourse, this is God. Son of man, can these bones live? And I always come after that with a wink emoji because God knew the answer to it. And here comes Ezekiel with his answer, with a smiling face. Oh Lord God, thou knowest. But the real answer that Ezekiel wanted to give, this is in my mind, God really, these bones, they have been in this state for a while. They are very dry, impossible that these bones can live again. All these bones in this valley were very, very dry. There's no hope for these bones, no future. They're disconnected, hopeless, dejected, discouraged, and non-productive. Breathe on us, Lord. We started the year in prayer and fast, that's Greater Grace Anointed Ministries. And I was feeling like a resident of the city of dry bones. And on the third day, as I was finished praying, I heard this question really clear. Daughter, where did you go? And I said, God, where did I go? I'm right here. And he said it again, where did you go? Listen. I saw that I had lived long enough to experience enough challenging situations. But you see, 2023, my Lord, I was crushed, squeezed, misunderstood, talked about, hated. I couldn't explain what was happening. And some days I felt like I wouldn't make it to the end of the day. But God... He undergirded me in ways I never knew. He made himself increasingly real and precious to me. And he gave me back my joy even amidst the tears. Don't fool yourself, saints. Many times, as children of God, we lose the zeal that we had at first. We become bogged down just going through the motions and no longer experiencing the joy of serving Christ. Listen, all of us, at some point in our Christian walk, felt like giving up. We get weary. We get tired. But that is why Revivals are needed. He has taught me that he will lead me on whatever journey he chooses and will never leave me for a moment of that journey. God is good no matter what. I had a Samson experience when they had taken on my eyes and there was no vision and I really didn't know where to go. But on one Good Sunday morning, 
as they were leading Samson out of that jail to go and perform for those that were sitting in the stands, his strength came back. He was revived. His hair grew back. And he said, this last time, God, set me, ask the little lad, set me between these two pillars. And he destroyed more people at his death than when he was living. There are times when we feel like we cannot go on. And that's when revival is needed. God is good no matter what. And that is he is morally excellent. Extraordinarily beautiful. Extravagantly bountiful, unchangingly, and full of goodwill. God is inclined to give human beings beyond all they deserve all the time. The goodness of God is the core of our Christian faith. It is because of this desire for good that He provided salvation through His Son. The goodness of God is evident in all of his creations and accomplishments. Genesis 1 of 31 states, God saw all that he made and it was very good. We cannot earn his goodness. It is available to us regardless of our station in life. And even though we are not worthy of it, Matthew 5.45 says, He causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good. And he sends the rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. His character does not change. He will continue to be the creator of all things good. And we can be confident he will provide good things for us according to his perfect plan. So now, God, in all your goodness, will you revive us again? In Psalm 85, 6, the psalmist asked the question, Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Some of us walk through these doors, sad, lost our joy, don't even want to praise God. We are just waiting for Pastor Justin to give the benediction. We need to be really true to ourselves because we will not get revived. So this real person must come into this house of God. Accept all that God is telling you about yourself and change. We don't want to waste these four nights. That just said it was just good. After these four nights, what next? Are we going to go back into the same old patterns? No. When God has revived us, there must be transformation. Situations wear us out. Our love for the things of God wax cold. As a people, we forget and we drift away from our first love. As a result... We need to be revived. Society is fast becoming openly hostile to Christian values. Laws are being reinterpreted and rewritten to sanction things that are not of God. As a result, we need to be revived. The church, in spite of all its activities and apparent successes, has no measurable effect in reversing the downward spiral in morality. As a result, we need to be revived. We cannot allow our city to go under. Wherever we are, the place is supposed to be blessed. Wherever we are, there must be some transformation. If they're not seeing our light, we need to shine light, our light brighter. We need to turn up the watts or change the bulbs because they need to see our light. It cannot be hid under a bed or a bushel. Our light must shine. And if our light shine, our city will be revived. But the Christians are hiding the gospel and keeping it to ourselves. We're really good in church. We worship. Sing along with Sister Abby. God bless her. But then what? What next? When we leave here tonight, 
the cousins and the aunts and the sisters and the mothers and the fathers and the godparents that we don't speak to, we need to speak to them because we have been revived. Simple as that. You cannot be revived and do that which is not according to God's word. We cannot be revived or say that we have been revived and we are not speaking to the people on the other side of the aisle. We cannot say that we have been revived and we do not witness to our co-workers. They do not know that we are serving the J and Jesus. Revival is necessary. Revival awakens the saved from a state of spiritual slumber. And there are several conditions for revival. Just allow me to share two. I'm re sharing on repentance and prayer. Repentance sounds like a harsh word to many, but it's an essential aspect of the gospel. When John the Baptist preached, he said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. When Jesus began to preach, he said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. When Peter preached on the way of day of Pentecost, he told his listeners, repent. Repentance is a change of purpose and intentions, a change of direction and action. God wants us to be holy channels through whom his blessings, witness, and interventions into the world can flow. And if we are not holy, he cannot use us. We may have to renounce all bitterness, unforgiveness, malice, goss gossip, and even anger and all the pride that we carry. What it is that we have to repent of? Take your pick. It could be a number of things. But sincere repentance is to turn to God and therefore away from our sin. Sincere repentance is done with all our hearts, giving everything you surrender and you can in surrender to God. Sincere repentance is marked by action and emotion. Joel chapter 1 verses 13 and 14 states, Gird yourself and lament you priest, priest, wail you who minister before the altar, Come, lie all night in sackcloth, you who minister to my God. For the grain offering and the drink offering are withheld from the house of your God. Consecrate a fast. Call a sacred assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord and cry out to the Lord. Pastor Justin... Has given an order. Consecrate a fast. Joel called the religious leaders to lead the nation in repentance. He did not call the regular members. He called the leaders first. So leaders, we know that we must be in the house of God. You cannot walk the altar and not be Revived. Guard yourselves. Prepare to do the work of repentance. Consecrate a fast. Eating isn't important now. Call a sacred assembly. Call for God's people to come together and repent. Gather the elders. All leaders should make a special effort to be part of this consecration. I'm a I'm afraid to ask this question. Are all the leaders in the house tonight? Come into the house of the Lord. Assembly, assemble together in the place where you meet with God and cry out unto God. Cry out to the Lord and trust that he will respond. Revival 
is necessary. Prayer. In Acts chapter 12, Herod the king stretched out his hand to harass some of the church. And no doubt this was done because it was politically popular for Herod. It pleased many of his citizens who didn't like Christians. And many political figures are ready to persecute Christians if it will make them politically popular. He killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And this was a new development in the history of the church. Of the 12 who followed Jesus, James was the first to be martyred. Up to Acts 12, the church had been on a streak of success, experiencing one exciting conversion after another. First, there was Saul of Tarsus, and the gen then the Gentile centurion Cornelius, then the highly successful work among the Gentiles and Jews in Antioch. But in Acts 12, the ugly opposition inspired by Satan raised its head. A side note. Eusebius relates a story from Clement of Alexandria to historians who said the soldier guarding James before the judge was so accepted by his witness that he declared himself a Christian also and was also willingly executed for Jesus alongside of James. We thank God for people like this who comes alongside us, but not all of them would want to hear what we have to say. Seeing his increased popularity, when he killed James, and Herod was one of them, he sought to improve his ratings even more when he proceeded further to seize Peter. And Peter was then placed in prison. But here comes the power of the church. Herod decided to deal with Peter at a politically opportune time, fearing an unpredictable mob reaction. When Passover pilgrims filled Jerusalem, he decided to bring him before the people after Passover. Annoying Peter with the other apostles had mysteriously escaped from prison before. Herod assigned a high security detail to guard Peter. But the church prayed for Peter. Prayer was offered to God for him by the church. And in this context, Herod had his soldiers and his prisons, but the church had the power of prayer and the outcome would soon be seen and easily decided. Peter was kept in prison, but the church was free to pray. And when every other gate is shut, saints and locked, the gate of heaven remains wide open. We must take advantage of that open gate through prayer. When we are up, uh, when our backs are up against a wall and we don't feel like we can go on, call the church to prayer. When marriages are breaking up in the church, call the church to prayer. When your children are acting like fools, call the church to prayer. There is still power in prayer. Constant prayer was offered to God for him. And the word constant also has the idea of earnest. Literally, the word pictures someone stretching out all they can for something. Luke uses the same word, um, constant, sorry, earnest for the agonizing prayer of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. So you know what intense prayer was going on for Peter. Much of our prayer is powerless. Because it lacks earnestness. Too often we almost pray with the attitude of wanting God to care about things we really don't care much about. Earnest prayer has power. Not because it, it in itself persuades a reluctant God. Instead, it demonstrates that our heart cares passionately about the things God cares about. Fulfilling Jesus' promise, if you abide in me 
and my words abiding you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done. Prayer works. Constant prayer was offered to God and we will continue to pray in Miller until something happens. We will continue to pray until um, revival comes to the city because the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. That night Peter was sleeping. He showed no signs of anxiety. He was able to sleep soundly on what seemed to be the last night before his execution. Bound with two chains between two soldiers. The chains, the guards, the prison doors meant nothing to God and his appointed messengers. Peter was instantly freed. The soldiers, the chains, the guard post, the iron gate were all nothing when God was with Peter and a praying church was behind him. The contrast between Herod and the church was clear. Herod believed he had the upper hand against God's people, but God showed Herod who was really in charge. He arrested Peter, but the earnestly praying church saw God rescue Peter. Prayer is one of the most important aspects of followers of Christ, and it should not be taken lightly. When we pray, we are inviting God into our lives and asking for his guidance. Prayer changes things, and prayer changes our situations. Prayer changes us. Daniel was a man that prayed diligently, even against the king wishes. He set time apart to pray. David, although a warrior in battle, was also a warrior in prayer. Elijah is described as a man with a spirit like ours. He prayed earnestly, and the Lord heard him. Friends, tonight there's hope. There's hope for us. Whatever situation we are in, there's hope for us. We can be revived. Our community can be revived. Our church can be revived. Our children can be revived. Job 14, 7 to 9, King James Version says, for there's hope of a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stock thereof die in the ground, yet through the scent of water it will bud, and bring forth boughs like a plant. In this chapter, the patriarch Job continues to struggle and grieve over the losses he had suffered, including the death of all his seven children. Ten. All his animals were gone his crops destroyed, and his family ruined. But Job was here describing the miracle of nature that I'm sure some of us may have observed. A dead, decaying tree, cut down and discarded, now budding and blooming again. This is evidence that what may appear dead to the natural eye may still contain a spark of life. So if they're saying that the church is dead, news flash, there's still a spark of life. And it only takes a spark to get the fire going. Malachi chapter 2 verse 15. But did not he make them one? Yet had he the residue of the spirit. And why one? That he might seek a godly seed. Therefore take heed to your spirit. And let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. In this verse God speaks of the residue of the spirit. It's not an easy verse for me to interpret. But the more discerning Bible scholars see the term residue of or remnant of the spirit as relating to God's eternal purpose being lodged within those he has chosen and called. So we have a residue of the spirit lodged in us. God is not turning his back on us. 
He'll hold on to that residue and he'll hold on to the spark in the name of Jesus. We are being revived. I don't really care how low you may feel tonight. There's a residue and there's a spark that God is willing to work with. If you will just offer it to him, he will transform you in the name of Jesus. Ezekiel 37 verse 46 again, he said unto me, prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and ye shall live. That valley of dry bones may well describe our situations tonight. But our, the, my, our, my instruction is to speak the word only and see the Lord perform the miracle. It does not matter how far away you have drifted. Today you are in the right place to be revived and to be restored. The prophet was not to rebuke the bones. I'm not rebuking the bones. I'm speaking what was said to me to speak. These dry bones can live. Prophesy to these bones. You shall live and not die in the name of Jesus. You shall be revived. Oh Lord, breathe on us again. God has not given up on us. We might have considered ourselves to be too far gone for hope. But no residue, remnant, spark. That's all he needs to work. He will revive us again. Is there any hope for Miller Evangelical? Is there any hope for greater grace tonight? Is there any hope for this congregation? Yes, there is. We can be instilled with new life. There have been instances in history where entire cities have been swept by revival. Charles Finney shook Rochester, New York. Philip influenced Samaria with his preaching. Paul caused the fear of God to come over the city of Ephesus. What would revival look like for us? What would revival look like in our churches? Since the truth about revival is, if we want to see transformation outside of these walls, then there must be transformation inside of these walls. If we want to see a revival take place in your families or your communities, your friends or the city, the revival must take place in you first, the revival must take place in me first. The hymn says, revive us again. Fill each heart with your love. Let his soul be rekindled with the fire from above. I pray tonight for God to pour out his spirit upon us. That we can take this city by force. I think if we grab the city, we might grab the state. If Sister Abby handles the Bronx and you all handle Queens and Long Island and Brooklyn, we can cover New York for Jesus. Revival starts with one person. One single person. In that Welsh revival, it was one young lady. While they were gathered for youth meeting, she stood up and she gave her testimony. And the whole church started to cry. And they prayed all night. And revival broke out in Welsh. We can do that. God has not left us saints, but we have to make ourselves available. 
We must open up our hearts, be truthful to ourselves. This is where I am. I am not as close to God as I used to. We try to put on all these masks for the people that are around us, but God knows our heart. He knows our heart to so take the mask off tonight. And you, the real you, stand up and face life like a man or a woman and let God fix it for you. Revival is needed because we get tired. We think that we are doing for God what God wants us to do. Mm -hmm. When we come to choir practice and women's meeting and we're always in the church and our husbands can't see us and we have to do this or pass the so and so and this and we're always running, running, running. Sometimes we are running on empty, going through the motions. We're stuck in drive automatic because we don't want to feel ashamed and we don't want anyone to find out that I'm not where I used to be or I'm not where I should be. There's no shame in the game. We just need to be truthful because this is not a one person thing. This is an entire church that's coming together to tell God, I need you. I need more of you. I'm not where I used to be. But God, I'm coming with a heart that's full of repentance, asking you to change me, to fill me again, to transform me so I can go and win souls. You know, you know I, I always have to speak to this. When, when we were younger, and I'm closing because 9.32, I don't want us to be here too long. But when we were younger, I, I, I want to know if it's a different Holy Spirit. Well, I am older, okay? So, <laughs> I'm talking about plenty years. But when we were younger, Pastor Justin, and we are doing an open year, okay? And a drunken man comes up. And you preaching and preaching. And he will have his bottle in his hand truth as there is a God. He will have that beer or whatever he's drinking in his hand. And it always amazed me at the power of God. By next Sunday, he has a shirt on and in church delivered from alcohol. I want that type of Holy Spirit. I don't know if it's a different Holy Spirit that's operating in these days or if we are too selfish because mm -hmm. we love praise and worship and nothing wrong about that but praise and worship is not for us you thought it was for you no that's the incense we stand up to God in thanksgiving for living it's not for us, but we love praise and worship, and we have this thing, one more minute, that if we don't get our favorite song, church dead. You need to be revived. You should be up here first. First. Praise and worship is not for you. Did you die on the cross? Did you heal anyone? You provided for anyone? No. Praise and worship belongs to the Lord. You are just, by the way, enjoying the friend's benefits. So don't come in church as though you are God and you want the worship team to satisfy you. I have to stop because I might go till 10 o'clock when this time starts up your life. Mm -hmm. Revived people don't act like that. Revived people come in through those doors with praise on their lips. 
in the name of Jesus. You ain't waiting for nobody. I could sing if you're clapping, if you have a tamb tambourine, if you have a nine-piece band. Same worship coming out of my mouth. Nobody changes my worship to God. I told y'all I'm old, so I know about clap hand church. Then we, we, we upgrade to tambourine. And Jesus, when we get a box getter, we all that and a bag of chips. Now, I like that musician there. Now we have drums, keyboards, organs, guitars, percussions, everything. And we feel it's for us. Don't touch my instruments, your instruments. All right, let me be here, Father, in the name of Jesus. As the pastor and me coming out there, because it's foolishness. Worship is not yours. Worship is for the Lord. So this Sunday, as you come in here, you enter in these gates with thanksgiving and coming into this course with praise for the Lord. Don't worry about who have on the same dress from last week. God bless her. She washed it and she came back. Forget about those foolishness. If you figure, let me tell you what, what revived people do. If I'm wearing the same dress, first Sunday and second Sunday, Revived people will call me aside and buy me another dress for third Sunday and fourth Sunday. Revived people don't speak about people. They speak about the Lord. And it's time we grow up. Sorry. I forget about I grew up in old time church. Amen. So I stay in my peace. But I, 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 I hope you, you get what I'm trying to say to us tonight. It is not about you. It was never about you. It will never be about you. It is all about God in the name of Jesus. So stop acting as though you're all that on a bag of chips. It is God who chose us to be part of his mighty army. And we should be grateful. Be revived. Shut down all the foolishness. Open your heart to the Lord and be real with God and say Father breathe on me change me I need to do better in the name of Jesus revive me again we need to take this city by force change some lives you know, it always amazes me wherever churches are, nobody in that street attends the church. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Anybody next door comes to the church across the street? The new building? Say yes, please. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. But it's always in the minority. We always have to bus people from miles away to come into church. We need to make a difference. We need to revive our community and have them coming in by the droves. And you know what is so amazing? And Pastor, Pastor Justin, you can start walking to me. You know, if we're serving food, we have like 5,000 people in the street. If we are serving food, I know it's a totally different ministry, but if we are serving food, everybody on the street comes. If we are having a service, the church is half full. We can change that. 
as we call on the leaders and those who work the altars, we are consecrating a fast and having a solemn assembly that God will revive us, God will revive the church, God will revive the community, and God will revive the city. God bless you. word of the Lord has been released tonight and I pray that the church has heard what the spirit is saying if you listen closely there are two important elements to revival as Dr. Charles shared is prayer and repentance and Miller Evangelical as I was sitting there I thought to myself we must repent there are some ways that we must repent from. There are some habits that we must abandon. I won't air them out. But there are some ways we must abandon. If revival is going to take place, well, let me say this word the Lord gave me a word for us at the top of this year it said disrupt the darkness but we can't be disruptors of the darkness as I told you before if we are perpetuating the darkness the disruption must take place in us first and so tonight one more time again tonight this sanctuary, this place is a prayer room. And we're going to gather together a solemn assembly, as you said from the words of Joel. We're going to assemble to this altar and we're going to pray and repent. From the leaders, starting with myself, to everyone else down the line, we must change our way. If we are to be all that God wants us to be, we must change our ways. No more of the complacency. No more of the, any divisiveness. No more. God does not want to operate in things like that. So tonight, I'm going to ask you all to come to this altar. Greater Grace, your home here you are more than welcome to come to this altar as well. But we must pray and repent. See, the Spirit of the Lord will begin to speak to us tonight about what those ways are and those things are personally. Don't think about anybody else. Let it start with you. We must change our ways. change the way we talk change our lackadaisical attitudes towards the house of God we must change We must repent. 
I believe the spirit of the Lord is beginning to deal with some of you right now. Conviction is coming your way now. See, when I gave the vision to, of this church, he said, be the bridge that connects people to Christ. One of the things that I knew is that the enemy was going to attack us in a certain way. If we're trying to be a connector, a bridge, then what he will do is try to make us a divider. Open your eyes, Miller Evangelical. Pray, repent. We want revival tonight. We want the breath of God to breathe on us afresh tonight. But if we insist on staying in a dry state, then we will not see what we are looking for. Some of us right now need to ask God for forgiveness. Ways we have we dealt with our brother and sister. Ways that we have approached worshiping the Lord. Some of us have made our own agendas and try to leverage that for our own gain in the house of God. This is the Lord's church. None of that. To those of you online, you know what the Lord is speaking to you about in the area that you need to repent from now. But Father, tonight, we lay our lives before you again. Come, Merla, let's pray. Let's open our mouths and pray unto the Father. Father, tonight we thank you for who you are. Lord God, I thank you for your goodness and your mercy. I thank you for your kindness. I thank you for your love. I thank you, God, that, Lord, that you are always there. Father God, I thank you that you are there with us even when we go afar and we stray away. Father, you are like that father in the parable of the prodigal son whose arms remain open, ready to receive us when we make our way back. Father Lord, tonight, we, your people here at Miller Evangelical and at Greater Grace, and even to those who may be watching from different locations, we, your people, we bow in your presence, God, humbly. And Father God, even as we are in pursuit of revival tonight, Lord, you have spoken to us that we must repent. There are some ways that we must abandon. So first and foremost, God, we ask for forgiveness tonight. Forgive us, Lord, for every time that, Lord, we did those things and we acted in ways and operated in ways that were contrary to your way. Forgive us for all those times that we were operating in the flesh in your church and not led by the Spirit. Forgive us, Lord. For those times where we try to backbite and gossip and tear down our brother and sister with our lips. Father, I ask you tonight that you would cleanse us. Cleanse us. In the name of Jesus, from every leader, every board member, all the way down to every congregant. My God, cleanse us. Cleanse us. Begin to deal with our hearts tonight. Father, the heart of stone, break it up and make it a heart of flesh before you again. My God, help us tonight. Help us to come back to the place where we were once on fire for you. Help us to come back to the place where we once hungered for your word hunger to get in your presence 
Father God, help us to release this type of entertainment type of approach when we come into the house of God. But Lord, let us come ready to worship, to give our offering unto you, our worship. Lord, let us embody Romans 12, 1, which says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, make yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. For this is your reasonable act of worship every minister in this house every prayer warrior altar worker every leader every congregant the youngest to the oldest begin to move on us tonight release your ruach tonight over your people letting this not just be a bunch of services but a point of pivot where we shift and we turn where the, the, the darkness that hovers around us is disrupted father I come against the devil himself who has been prowling around in ministries perhaps in this church in greater grace in other churches that we affiliate with i come against the enemy tonight who seeks to cause havoc in the church of god lord we send an eviction notice tonight to satan himself satan you must leave this house but this is holy ground and it belongs to the lord jesus christ Release your hands off your of the, our, God's people tonight. You seek to make them pawns, but they are servants of the living God. I pray in Jesus' name. Work in us, Lord Jesus. Work in us. Father, as pastor, I repent before you. I repent before you. For not holding those accountable that need to be held accountable. And that need to walk the straight and narrow. I bow humbly in your presence God. And I ask you to forgive me. Let revival begin in me. Let it begin in every person at this altar tonight. I pray that you would send a mighty Russian wind now into this house. My God, I pray that you will release power like never before on your people. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray even for those who are not here in this building tonight, but they may be watching. I pray in Jesus' name that you would begin to stir them up wherever they are, whether they're in their homes or they're in their cars, wherever they are, begin to minister to them. Lord, we are desperate for revival. We are desperate for revival. So help us then to take the attitude of whatever it takes to get there. And we will do it. My God, work in us tonight. Again, we lay our lives before you. I pray for those tonight who are tired, who are weary because of life issues, because of circumstances, and because of that, the fire has gone out a bit. Oh God, but even as your servant said, all you need is a spark. Light the fire again, God. To those who are tired tonight, light the fire again. To those who are weary tonight, fresh wind, fresh fire. To those who are discouraged tonight, awaken them. To those who are in spiritual slumber, help them to arise. Let a mighty army come forth tonight. 
in the name of Jesus. Oh church, would you just begin to call on the name of Jesus. Come on and pray. Call on his name. There may be family members that need revival tonight that you know of. Call their names now. There may be co-workers that you know that need the touch of the wind of God, the Spirit of God. Call their names now. Persist in prayer tonight. Pray, 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 church, pray. fire of God tonight fire of the spirit of God wind and ruach of God let it flow tonight let it flow tonight flow tonight God Holy Spirit flow tonight stir your people tonight shake them tonight break them out of their slumber Break the chains that the enemy has attached on them. Let there be a marked difference in the life of your people after tonight. We can't do it in our own strength, Father. Only you can do this. It is only by the power of your spirit that brings transformation and healing and deliverance and revival. So we ask Holy Spirit fall fresh on us. Fall fresh on us. Oh everyone lift your hands and just say Father fall fresh on us. Just say, Spirit of God, fall fresh on us. Fall fresh on our church. Fall fresh on our family. Fall fresh on our children. Fall fresh on our parents. Fall fresh on our siblings. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us tonight. Fall fresh. Fall fresh. Fall fresh. Father, through prayer, we pull down every stronghold tonight that is holding back the church, that is holding back this church or any other church. Through prayer tonight, we pull down this stronghold in the name of Jesus the mighty name of Jesus the chain breaking name of Jesus the name that brings victory and has power to do exceedingly and above all that we ask or think tonight revive us again Lord. revive us again Revive us again. Keep praying tonight. Just stay at the altar here. Keep seeking his face. And as you seek him, I'm going to say this over you. When I was getting ready for revival, keep praying. Getting ready for this season, the Lord began to give me very specific songs for us to sing as prayers and declarations of revival. And one of the songs, and he gave me specific songs for each night. 
I had no idea how each night would go. But the song he gave me for tonight is a prayer and a declaration that we should pray tonight in song. It simply says this, it says, Let your fire fall Let your ruach blow Let it burn inside Blow in our lives Let your fire fall Let your ruach blow let it burn inside blow in I'm gonna sing that over you lift your hands let your fire fall let your ruach blow let it burn inside blow in our let your fire fall, let your ruach blow, let it burn inside, blow in our lives. Lift your hands and say, let your fire fall, let your ruach blow. Let this be our prayer tonight. Let it burn inside. Blow in our lives. Let your fire, let your fire fall. Yeah, let your ruach blow. Let it burn inside. Blow in our lives. Blow in our lives.
speak it over you tonight. Fire burn, fire burn. Ruach blow, Ruach blow. Let it burn inside. Blow in our life. Holy Ghost, fire burn, fire burn, fire burn. church Oh, 
Fire burn, fire burn. Fire burn, fire burn. Oh, I flow, I flow. Oh, let it burn inside. Oh, Jesus. Fire burn, fire burn. Oh. presence of the Lord is here. So why don't you just take a moment and worship him. We're we not on a schedule tonight. Just worship him. When was the last time you really took time to worship God? When was the last time you just sat before the Father and just adored Him. 
and just magnified him and just exalted his holy name. Just worship him. Worship him. Oh God, fresh wind, fresh fire tonight. For those of you watching online, fresh wind, fresh fire. tonight even to those who need healing in their body I sense Lord that your I know that your spirit has the power even in this at this environment now to begin to supernaturally touch every ailment every disease so father even now as your presence is here I ask by the power of the Holy Spirit under the authority of your name Jesus that you would release healing upon your people there are those who are not just physically ailing but there are those who are emotionally ailing and tonight God breathe on them breathe on them in the name of Jesus fresh wind now over their body, over their mind, over their soul. Fresh wind in the name of Jesus. 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 Let us just thank the Lord for what he is about to do. Because even as we have sought him, let me say this. As I said, these services need not to just remain services. They must be a pivot. It must be a turning point. It would make no sense we leave here tonight and we go back to the same old way. And we go back to the same old bad habits. No. No. It must change. So I pray, Holy Spirit, tonight that you will release true transformation in the hearts of your people. I pray tonight that whatever that issue is, that thing, that habit that has a grip on your people tonight, Lord, I pray that you would free them from it. However the enemy is trying to use your people tonight to create chaos. Destroy that plot now, I ask. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Help us to arise as a mighty army. Disruptors of the darkness. There is work to be done for the kingdom of heaven. So arise, people of God. Arise. The Lord is calling you to arise. He is calling us to arise. I thank God for the word tonight. I thank God for his servant tonight. Don't you just love God's presence? When he comes in a room, it's like everything just stands still. And you just have to abide and sit and behold the beauty of God. The music. 
music fades and all is stripped away and I simply come we all know this let's sing it together longing just to search much deeper within. Now this is a personal song between you and God, so come on, sing it out. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Come on, sing. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. This is a song of repentance. It's, it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about. Let's sing it again. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Come on, come on, let's do it. One last time, say, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. All it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. I'm sorry, Lord, for about you it's all about you Jesus yeah 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 it's all about you ah, it's all about you just say it's all about you just say it's all going to prolong this any longer. But I just thank you, Lord, for your presence tonight. And we worship and adore you and we give you praise tonight. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. 
we bless your name we exalt your name and we glorify your name tonight glory be unto your holy name hallelujah i pray you were blessed tonight i pray that you were truly blessed tonight and i pray and i thank you dr charles for sharing the word tonight thank you thank you would you stand with me tonight I want you to take the person's hand next to you and tell them by faith tell them by faith you are revived tell somebody by faith you are revived tell them by faith Try bones, come to life. Try bones, come to life in the name of Jesus. Now, if you believe that, give God praise. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Now, it's revival, guys. We want to go out of this place praising and rejoicing, believing God for what he is about to do. We want to arise like a mighty army. In fact, the Lord has called us to be a mighty army. Right here in Brooklyn, New York, to be a mighty army. Wherever you go, you know you are a soldier in the army of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So if I say, we are going up. We're going up together. We're going up to conquer. In the name of the Lord. Everybody say, we are going up. up, up. We're going up together. We're going up to conquer. In the name of the Lord. Say we are going up. Say we are going up. We're going up together. We're going up to conquer. In the name of the Lord. One more time. We are going up. We are going up. We're going up together. We're going up to conquer.